Hello, this is David D. Hilster. I'm a critical thinker, especially today. Look at this. Look at this, folks. Yes. Critical thinker, naturalphilosophy.org. There it is. Yeah, that's my T-shirt. We got our T-shirts ready for the conference coming up in, from July tw uh, 19th to the 22nd in the University of British Columbia, where we're going to have people from all around the world who are critical thinkers getting together and talking without impunity, without having anybody telling them, well, you can't say that bad stuff about the Big Bang. Hey, you can't have a new model for the universe. We already know everything. But anyways, I am a, as you know, critical thinker. I'm a dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. And of course, you're not going to hear that from your professors, nor from mainstream media, nor from those science evangelists on TV who are so holy. What we're going to talk about today is special relativity. It's very special because it's especially wrong of all of Einstein's theories, general relativity, special relativity, the photoelectric effect for which he, he, he won the Nobel Prize. They're all problematic, but we're going to talk about special relativity today. If I were to tell somebody what is the biggest biggest problem with special relativity and the easiest to look at is particle accelerators because in particle accelerators we have the problem that special relativity says according to Einstein as you get close to the speed of light mass must increase if we follow his axioms which is all physical phenomenon happen the same in all frames inertial frames and that light speed is measured the same no matter what inertial frame you're in. Those things cause havoc upon logic. Those things cause, cause havoc so much in logic that we can't use it. We use it in particle accelerators because we use kinematic, relativistic kinematic equations. What's that all mean? It means the, the kinematics, which is smashing stuff together, kinetics, kinetic energy. Well, we use relativistic, meaning we use equations that have special relativity baked in. So as you get, it has this letter C, the speed of light squared in it. As you get closer to the speed of light, things change. But we've saved it. Pauli saved it with the neutrino. Dr. Karazani, one of the great minds and scientists of the 20th century, he in the early 1940s found that out. So what happens is if you have special relativity and you have particles going close to the speed of light and particle accelerators, well, you got to apply uh, Einstein's special relativity to it. And when you do that, what do you have? You come up with more energy that's supposed to be there than you detect. And of course, that's why they have the neutrino. Because if you look at particle accelerators and used relativistic, those magic equations from Einstein stuck in there so that as you get closer to the speed of light, more energy should be there. Well, let's just take it away with a magical neutrino, which has no mass, no, no, no charge, no, no nothing. And of course, um, now there's lots of them and they say they found them, but they didn't, you know, it, it's a mess. I, uh, neutrinos are the bad boy. They're the bad boy of particle physics. But regardless of that, what happens then? They say, of course we uh, relativistic equations work. The kinematic relativistic equations work because if they didn't, if we didn't use those equations, it wouldn't balance out. Well, if you threw away the neutrino, they won't balance out with the relativist, relative Einstein's theory of special relativity applied to kinetics. So what happens? is, well, you have the magic particle that was invented that makes no sense at all, that has no mass, you can't really detect it, and it's a mess. You put that together and you add it. So now with Einstein's equations that require now magical energy to appear because you're going close to the speed of light are saved by the magical, per magical particle, the neutrino. But what happens in particle accelerators? They don't observe mass increase. Go to EinsteinWrong.com, watch my documentary, and you'll see Dr. Kessley, a real scientist at Stanford Linear Accelerator, say right to the camera, we don't observe mass increase. Why doesn't anybody talk about that? Because if they did, everything has to be thrown out. So what, do, what does that mean? It means every time a particle accelerator is fired, 
millions of times a second, trillions of times a second, whatever, how many we want to say, and all the collaterals around the world, we are disproving special relativity each time. Karazani shows again that the neutrino saves it. That's why it was invented. You take those out, and Karazani can do nucleus nucleus collisions without the neutrino because you take out the relativistic equations and replace them with his equations where he found, found the mistake in special relativity and everything balances out without the neutrino, without relativistic mechanics and what he calls autodynamic equations which are pretty much Newtonian. Oh my gosh, the world's Newtonian. It's not magic. I mean, I've got my PhD in astrophysics. I've got to go back to my class my class reunions and impress people and say gibberish that they'll never understand. And they go, oh, well, yeah, let's see. He's an astrophysicist. Go get that man. Hey, you want a beer? Uh, no. Doesn't make you right. So special relativity is not, mass increase is not observed in particle accelerators. Dr. Kessley has to unteach his grad students special relativity's predictions so they can get back to normal. And there are other things like, oh, GPS looks like, and this is just something happening this year with Ron Hatch, who has, happens to have, oh, maybe 30 patents in GPS. He's writing NASA saying, NASA, I know where your problem is, why you're off uh, 0.05 picoseconds on everything. That's the speed of the satellite. You have to add it to the speed C. <gasps> you are violating Einstein again. Why? C can't be C plus V, even if it's a teeny little bit. You can't go past faster than the speed of C. Oh, but if you do that and you add in the velocity of GPS, you will get, this, the numbers will all work out for GPS. So GPS doesn't support relativity. It shows the flaws in relativity. So those people who are talking about the great year. How many years ago was it that Einstein's great miracle year he writes about e equals mc squared and special relativity and all his things that he wrote about in that year? Well, Mr. Einstein, they're not right. Special relativity has to be untaught. It doesn't work in GPS. We don't avert, observe park mass increase. But we sit there and we talk about how wonderful it is and, oh, praise Einstein. Oh, Einstein's favorite um, comedian is Groucho Marx, uh, so that means Groucho Marx is the best comedian that ever lived because Einstein blessed him. That's from an interview I did with a person who personally knew Einstein. So let's stop all this nonsense and let's just remember always, don't take what people say on faith. Stay critical, stay thinking. I am your science therapist. I will cure you of this disease of not thinking critically. I will help you. That's why I'm here. Ciao for now.